Hello YouTube and welcome back to another video. And if you don't know, my name is James and I run a catering called Fern. So what I'm going to do this year is do a little mini series of what I actually do over winter to Fern. And this year I've had to do a lot more than what I would do normally. So hopefully it'll be some interesting videos. And in this video, we're going to do a service. So that's going to include an oil change. So changing the oil filter as well. We're also going to change the spark plugs and clean the air filter. So I'm not going to tell you exactly when you should be doing this because it depends on how you use your car. And for me, I generally do between six and 8,000 miles a year and around about kind of five track days a year, something like that. What I did do last year is I did the oil and filter change um, after around about six months. So it's kind of in between that time, but maybe a year would have been okay, but surely the, the more times that you can change your oil, that's only going to help your engine. So for me, I generally do this around about twice a year, but the spark plugs only once. So what do we need um, to do this? Well, let's have a look. So this is everything that we're going to use. First of all is oil. So this is the brand that I use, um, mainly because it's on the Caterham website and they sponsor Caterham. I generally get all of my fluids from OP Oils, but obviously lots of different brands available and other suppliers. Uh, this is the oil filter and this is Caterham branded. No one's going to see it under there, um, but I do use the Caterham one, but I'm sure there's other brands out there that you can use as well. These are the spark plugs that I'm going to use. Again, I'm sure there's other brands available, but these are the ones that I use. We're going to use a zip tie to go around the uh, dipstick. And this year I'm going to put in a magnetic sump plug, which I've only had the standard one before. Um, just to see if there is anything inside the engine, but hopefully there's not. And here are the tools that we're going to use. So we've got some socket wrenches, uh, some sockets. So the 13 millimeter to get the current sub plug out. Um, the new one is 17, so 17 millimeter. Uh, we're going to use this um, to get the uh, oil filter out. Just makes it a lot easier, um, but I'm sure we can do it in other ways as well. Uh, we've got some gloves, uh, just so we don't get messy with the oil. Uh, these to cut off the zip tie. And a torque wrench to torque up the uh, sump plug. This is to, uh, what are we, H5 I think, yeah, H5 uh, hex bit uh, to take off the um, engine cover. And this is new to me, so this is um, made by Laser Tools uh, for the spark plugs, it's actually magnetic. Um, so we're going to check this out, see if I like this or not. It's quite a weighty item actually, but it's got a magnet in to hold it in place, but I got this for Christmas. Um, so we'll see if this is any good hopefully. Before I've just used a normal... Um, kind of socket for uh, spark plugs, but mine's quite old, so the kind of suction on it wasn't amazing. So we will uh, see how this goes. I'm not an expert in any way. I'm just an owner who learns how to do jobs as they need doing. First run the engine up to temperature so the oil is warm and it will flow easier. Let's drain the old oil out. This is the tray that I use to catch the oil. I'm using a 13 millimeter socket to undo the old sump plug to let the oil out. The tray that I use, you can also use to store the old oil in. I will be disposing of the old oil properly by taking it to the tip at a later date. I will be leaving links in the description below of any products that I've used and also where I bought them. As you will see, this is a very easy job to do. And by doing simple jobs on your car, it helps getting to know your car as well. I forgot to say earlier, but this is for a Sigma engine. Don't forget to move the tray catching the oil if needed when the flow reduces. Now while the oil is draining, this is a perfect time to change the spark plugs. All right, let's uh, get on with changing the uh, spark plugs. I'm just pausing here very quickly because when I was editing this, I was saying to myself, you don't normally do this. It must have been the pressure of filming or something, but I just wanted to clarify. Try to reduce the time that the oil cap is off. So leave it on until you take all the bolts out and then take it off to remove the cover and then put the cap straight back on. If you do drop a bolt in there, a quick job becomes a very long job. So I just wanted to confirm that rather than you shouting at the TV. So first thing, take off the oil cover if it's not already off. And then I'm going to use my H5 socket to undo these screws. Right, 
One thing that would be very helpful, I don't know if anyone's uh, got a spare one of these covers knocking around. It just seems to me a little bit criminal to pay the price for a plastic one. I'll show you in a minute that mine's starting to kind of break up just because it's so old, I think more than anything. Um, but I do like the carbon ones. I don't like the carbon kind of, I don't know, like a slither of carbon down the middle. Um, just personally, I, I'm not a fan of that. Um, but yeah, if anyone has a spare one that they, um, I don't know, want to sell or anything like that, then uh, yeah, just give me a shout. Because it just seems a bit criminal paying the full price for one, personally. Let's do this one a little bit more. But I'm really excited to use this uh, this new tool just to see what it's like. But we shall see. Put it through its paces. Right, that is out. So those three screws were out and there was a plastic thing there. And this is the engine cover. And as you can possibly see here, so each time I take this off, well basically each time, it seems like a bit of plastic kind of breaks away here. It's just really quite brittle. Um, so yeah, if anybody does have a spare cover, let me know. So here we are, I'm gonna put the um, oil cover back on just to make sure that nothing goes in there, even though I'm sure it'll be fine. So let's uh, take the leads off and then get to the spark plugs. Oh, that is a, it is a very good noise, is that? So here is the um, tool that I've got from it was, um, laser tools make it. So there's a kind of little hand grip here and then a uh, wrench can go on it. And then it's magnetic and the spark plug obviously goes in there. So put it on top, then get a ratchet. And then take these off. So they're only hand tight and then nipped up. So do most of this by hand. So just quickly unscrew it and then put the new one in. Oh, sorry, just not the camera. So there we are. And as you can see, it's a bit dirty, not too bad. And because it's magnetic, just straight out. It just goes straight in like that. So there we go, that's the old one. Let's get a new plug out. These spark plugs are pre-gapped. I did measure the gap to what I found online and they matched, so I used them pre-gapped. But I'm not an expert, so I can only tell you what I've read online, but it might be best to have a look yourself. But as you can see, it's um, yeah, gone straight in the tool now and I'm just gonna hand tighten it up. And then after it's hand tightened, I'm just going to give it a little nip um, with the ratchet. I'm sure there's possibly some torque settings, but this will be fine. So there you go, a little nip. There we go, as easy as that. And then we'll uh, rest that ignition lead in there. That sound is good, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe I'm a bit sad. So okay, that's one done on the second one already. So it's a very easy job to do. And if I can do it, I'd say anybody can. And it's a perfect time to do it while the engine oil is uh, draining as well. So again, new spark plug in. And then hand tighten. I always start them off a little, going backwards a little bit just to make sure that they're definitely on the thread, just to make sure that you don't cross thread it. And there we go, that's number two. And just two more today. Little nip. Third one. So 
So the one thing that we will do after this is um, check the catch tank to make sure that there's no oil in there. And then we will um, replace the uh, oil filter, or oh, sorry, change the oil filter uh, from the old one to the new one. And then we'll uh, fill it with oil. And then the next thing that I'll do, but I won't show in this video because I've already made a video on it, is um, to clean the air filter, which is there. You might have a different air filter, um, which would be in like a plastic box and there's just some uh, like bolts on the outside that you need to do and then, um, sorry, undo. And it'll be a uh, panel filter in there. There we go, nipped up slightly. And the last one's a little bit harder to take out just because there's not much space. But yeah, this new tool is working out really well. I like the um, grip on the end of it. So it makes it a lot easier because before I had a spark plug socket and then um, had a like an extension on that. But yeah, it's quite a weighty thing as well. It'd be, uh, I don't know if I should say this, but a good weapon. <laughs> it's, uh, it's yeah, quite, quite heavy. But yeah, it's working out really well, I think. Yeah, very handy being magnetic rather than a suction one, I think. And yeah, just, yeah, very nice kind of hand grip on it. And obviously great that you can put the ratchet in as well. So there we go, let's put the ignition needs back in. So then just take the oil cap back off and then put the engine cover back on. There we go. Now to put the new magnetic sump plug in. A 17 millimeter socket is needed for this. The original sump plug is torqued at 28 newton meters, but from what I've read online, this type of sump plug needs a little bit more. So I've guessed at 30 newton meters. When the engine is filled with oil, I will check the sump plug and the oil filter for leaks, just to make sure that they don't need tightening. Now to undo the oil filter, which is on the other side of the engine. Make sure that you have put your tray to catch the oil underneath first. I am using an oil filter wrench to make this easier. It's a good idea to wear a glove as it can get quite messy by getting oil on your hand. When the oil has drained, I'll wipe the area and then put the new oil filter in. I'm using the oil filter from Catrum. It says exactly what it says on the tin, basically, of what you need to do. Apply a film of oil to the gasket and then screw on the filter tightly by hand. Let's first fill the filter with oil and then apply a film of oil to the gasket. Now I'll screw the oil filter on by hand. So here is my oil catch tank. Yours might be in a slightly different place. Sometimes they're kind of near the back of the engine. But for me, it's just taking out these two pipes and then just pulling it out. He says the coolant, uh, the coolant hose is a little bit in the way, but
possibly could be in a better place. And as you can see, there's a little bit in there, nothing crazy, but we'll just uh, empty this out and then replace it. Sometimes the oil can look a little bit funny in here for me. Um, it's mainly because, well, I drive my catering in all weathers, so there could be some water that actually gets inside this catch tank. Um, but as you can see, well, as you could see from the um, oil that was in the engine, it was fine, but obviously being there, it could easily get some water come inside it from the uh, vents in the bonnet. So that's basically empty. Give it a quick wipe and then put it back. So there you go, those tubes are back in. There we go, it's back in. So now the next thing to do is to fill it up with oil. So the last thing to do is to fill it up with oil. So just take the oil cap off, or maybe it's already off. Put the funnel in, and then fill it with oil. So it's good to do this a bit at a time, just to make sure that you're not overfilling it. And obviously to make sure that you have put the sump plug back in and also the oil filter. So then what I will do is uh, just leave it to stand for a bit just to make sure that the levels are kind of all correct and then top up if needs be. Well, I will need to top up a little bit. So what I've done is I have um, left this to settle for a little bit and now let's take it out and see if the if I'm happy with the levels. See if you can see there and that's just it in the top so you see that's um, yeah perfect so we'll um, give it a quick wipe and then uh, put it back in and then put the zip tie around. So hopefully you can see there's a little bracket here. So the zip tie just goes around there and then through the hole. And the reason that we do this is, I think it's mainly for when you're kind of racing, but I'm sure it kind of happens on, or could possibly happen on a track day as well. It's just to make sure that the dipstick doesn't come out because I think that has potentially happened. So there we go. Zip tie's on. There's no way that's coming out. So we'll just quickly snip off the zip tie and then jobs are good. Well, hopefully you found this video interesting and I think probably the highlight of the video is probably this tool that's from Laser Tools. Yeah, I was really pleased with it. Um, yeah, really nice to have the kind of hand gripping bit at the top. And I'll leave a link in the description below to anything that I have used today, um, including the oil and any um, like tools that I've used, anything like that. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and uh, make sure that you like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And there'll be some more videos soon of what I have been doing over winter, which is, well, a lot. <laughs> so yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and please like and subscribe if you haven't already. It makes a big difference to a small channel like mine. And don't forget, every stone chip tells a story and I'll see you in the next one. Fade away yeah, 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 yeah. As you fade away